G'day everyone, welcome back to the channel. Um, I apologise this video is a bit mixed up, so it's for the most part before the last video, but after the one before. So uh, a little bit mixed up, a little bit muddled, but the potash at the very start is afterward at the bonnage. So anyway, yeah, we're getting caught up. Another found a lot more footage than I thought I had, so that's good. We've got plenty more videos to go. Um, today we've just been weighing up and picking up those U lamps. Way up where are they up in the corner out there and weighing up some store lambs uh, weighing the wee fellas up to try and get some stores out things are getting pretty dry in south at the moment we're early mid-february at the moment so yeah just trying to get rid of some mouths had uh, 10 store cattle go yesterday and 15 go to the works today which is a big help and hopefully the rest will be gone the, the big ones by mid-march which would be awesome uh, three handle lambs going next week, no, not next week, the week after. So things are loosening up and the grass does seem to be growing again, but our grass covers, the, the length of grass we have, did get pretty bloody hammered there for a while because typical southern fashion, we were holding out for rain, which never came. Anyway guys, enjoy the video. Just out here putting a bit of fertiliser on these paddocks, we took that baleage off. So we've got this stuff, myriad of potash or potassium chloride I think it is. It's, a, it's actually a salt, so it's pretty harmless stuff, but uh, also very expensive. So we're putting on 100 kgs to the heat there, so 2.2 ton, we've got 2.1, so near enough. But uh, this stuff's a dollar a kilo at the moment, and it hurts. We are trying as hard as we can to avoid using nitrogen this year, because the price has just gone through the roof. So we'll still use a little bit where needed. Um, young grass paddocks, possibly a bit on the Swedes. Probably a bit on the seeds, we'll see how they go. Hopefully none on any other grass. So normally after we put baited, yeah, normally after we cut baited, we'll put a mix on of uh, phosphorus, don't think it's got any sulfur in it, potassium and nitrogen. Um, put the math on that, for what we took off, it was gonna be about $6,000 to put that on before spreading costs, which obviously I do myself. Yeah, I know, still got the front mower on. Had to take the back one off and I just couldn't be bothered. So anyway, um, yeah. So we've got the phosphorus and the sulphur in the bin. Like I say, it probably doesn't need sulphur, but it'll be capital application for these paddocks as well. And just putting this potash on, and we'll see how we go with no nitrogen. Well, I think it's about time we uh, open this gate onto ow, ow. this young grass paddock. I reckon these girls are going to be quite happy to uh, run on there, and I don't think it's going to take them very long. So these three paddocks, this is where we did our new fencing over winter. There's one, two, and a third one over there. Getting a wee bit out of hand, as you can see. Um, we have had the gates open, I know, and we probably shouldn't have, but just the way everything worked out with bigger mobs having to be shifted around, they sort of needed it. Like, it's not bad here. This would normally be horrible, but it's the top now, so they can't, yeah. Down there's a bit rough. But what these, this, this new fencing has given us the option to do is to bring the hoggets over here. So the hoggets rotation, per oh! Hoggets rotation is now taken up by using lambs and baleage. Um, so they're going to come here, they've got these three paddocks, 12 hectares. I'm thinking we'll get round probably twice. Um, they'll be, oh, we'll see how we go. I reckon there'll be six days in, a, in, a, in each paddock. And then we'll get them topped. And then we'll see what they're like when they come back. We'll be getting pretty close to weaning by then. So we might sit there and go, well, some nice looking lamb feed the hoggets can go elsewhere. And we'll have options then too. But uh, yeah, we'll get this under control before it gets stupidly out of control in the next month. And that'll be a massive, massive, uh, well, it'll give us better quality feed, it'll save us money, because we'll be utilising the feed, and uh, it'll make my life a lot easier. So these girls, one, two, three paddocks are going to go to the next paddock down, the hoggets are going to come into here, then these ewes and lambs will get given the last one back as well. Just so they've got plenty of room, and uh, yeah, hopefully that young grass paddock down there in the next couple of weeks, by the time the hoggets need the third break, We'll be ready to graze. These ones can have that. As you can see up there, pearl! Using lambs have started flooding onto that paddock, which is good. They're still moving. Um, these ones here have got the gate open for that paddock. So hopefully in the next half hour they'll work that out. Yeah, things are coming together. So there we go. Those ones are going onto there. Those ones going onto there. Hoggets are in here. So you can see a bit further down the paddock, there's a bit of crap in here. We're not going to push them real hard, but uh, clean it up enough to top, and we'll be away laughing. There's um, 604 of these too, so 
that other mob was only about 250 ewes and the lambs don't really, we don't want to push the lambs to clean anything up so yeah, um, quite a few more in here, put them all in one paddock, we're not going to slow weight down much, um, whereas with the lambs we would, if we put them all in one, if we put all the ewes and lambs in one mob, in one paddock like this, they would, all that, all that mob, the 250 ewes, the lambs would probably not gain any weight for a few days and then milk production goes back. And with sheep, when milk production goes back, it doesn't pick up very often. You see, they're all going to string along and up there and work, work out their new surroundings. Um, whereas these girls aren't making milk, so they'll put on weight for three or four days in here, and then for two or three. I don't think there'll be six days in here, I think there'll be four or five. So, yeah. Um, for the last day or two, they probably won't gain any weight, but uh, that's pasture control. That's what it takes. Oh, let's go for a trip down the hill. Pretty steep, isn't it? Yeah. Pretty bumpy down here, too. What's that noise? That is the hydraulics. makes the spinners go. Oh, it spreads the fertilizer. Who's that um bag? That's the camp suspension. thing and that thing to get rid of all the lime that is down there in that shed but hydraulica is failure strikes again and there's only two hoses left on this thing that I haven't replaced this year and that is these two little short ones now not hard to see where the failure is I'm hoping that's it but I'm gonna you know, just presume it is um, it's been leaking for a wee while hope we haven't lost too much oil out of that trans Still reading on the gauge, it shouldn't be too bad, but uh, yeah. Anyway, not the end of the world. The reason I want to get rid of that lime out of there is because we've had a price rise in fertilizers again over the weekend. And the stuff, ooh, don't like that thing. 
Um, yeah, the product we use, Solfagan 15S, I think I got that right, has not risen in price. Super, which is made of, is more expensive than it currently. And the elemental sulfur that gets mixed with the super to make it is more expensive than it. So, uh, don't know why it hasn't gone up, but we need to get in there quick and get it before the price does go up. Because uh, I'm going to get another 40 ton of it. DAP has gone through the roof, so we won't use DAP on the young grass this year. We'll just use this stuff, and if we want a bit of nitrogen, we'll chuck a bit of urea or sustain on, because uh, your DAP is going through the roof. And it just gives us options that way. We can put all the super on in one go and then just use the nitrogen as we need as opposed to uh, needing to put a certain amount of nitrogen on to get the phosphorus right. Right, so there's the new hoses on the bulky. Uh, the only one that hasn't been replaced now is this one. Everything else because that's them all there. There are no other hoses on this thing that I'm aware of. Um, it's replaced. Oh, I really should do that. I should have done that when I did these, but I didn't, so it'll do what it'll do. Anyway, got to fix that problem and then get uh, those off. Whoops, shouldn't have shown you that. Have this wheel off. Um, hang on, I'll go show you. For my hay trailer, we were uh, doing a bit of experimenting. See this, this is a three piece split ring rim. Very, very dangerous things to change a tire on. That one there, which is now up there, was flat, buggered second time around, had enough. So I thought I'll take that wheel off to try and find out what stud pattern this was. Which was the same. Back ones are uh, same stud source as well, which is really handy. These ones here, have a slightly bigger stud so had to just bore the holes out a little bit they went from 21 to 23 mil and the nuts are still got a little bit of countersink there so they'll be right but uh need to go get this back on how's that for a load good old lime that's gonna be uh seven and a half ton in there i'm thinking we can get eight if we really load it perfectly and uh that's not quite perfect but that's a good load I do love spreading a bit of lime, eh? Something just so satisfying about seeing those lines like that. I don't know, just looks cool. So I've done down to here in this bit. Um, back over the other side's done, I'll show you that in a second. But we're out of lime, and I don't know whether I'm going to get any more for the season, because... Uh, 6 to 6.2 is our target range for uh, pH. The main job of lime is lifting the pH of the soil. Uh, around that six is where a lot of the bad stuff gets locked up and um, yeah, the good stuff becomes available. So your, your, your phosphorus and your, a lot of your other nutrients sort of they're pretty available, pretty happy medium around six. And a lot of the other stuff that you don't want coming through is locked up, yeah, above above 5.8. So pretty good range and a lot of our soil tests recently have come back at 6.3, 6.4. So we're just going to button off on the line for a couple of years. Um, I think we'll still do what we've been doing, which is 500 kgs to the heat there, but, which is what I'm doing today. But I think we'll just do like a third of the farm every year. Um, we haven't tested the whole farm, but we have pretty much tested the whole farm over 10 years now. But there's been a lot of lime going on in that time, so uh, yeah, we'll get a few more soil tests done. We'll just keep ticking away at it gently, and yeah, see where we're sitting. I might get some more done this season, and yeah, just to get an idea, it's a really hard one. At some point we're going to bite the bullet and do a whole farm soil test in one year, see where we stand. Because you, you can work pretty well off what your stocking rate is and what you're putting on. Should give you a pretty fair idea of, of what's happening with your soil fertility. But you've sort of got to keep track of it too. And there are 115 bucks a test and we'll probably have to do 50 tests. So do the math on that. It's it's not cheap. Excuse the dirty windows, but uh, yeah, a nice bit of hill work this morning. All done nice and tidy. Oh, thanks everyone. Hope you enjoyed that. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and uh, give us a like if you really feel like it. Uh, next video is going to be a bit of baleage, round bales of baleage. Uh, what else we've got? Last swedes going in and a few other bits and pieces of stocks. So uh, yeah, stay tuned. Cheers guys.